And welcome back. Uh, this week's Capitol Report, we have Pat McGuigan, our good friend and uh, partner here at, at, at News 9. And Pat, I'm going to be honest with you. When going over the questions for this week's um, list here, we're, we're supposed to be talking about uh, Tulsa Civic Hacker, the yeah. White House <laughs> honoring. But this means something completely different. Let's get right into okay. this. You know, when I was in college, the best teacher I had was in a class called The Writing of History. His name was Odie B. Falk, and he said, the only stupid question, if you're a journalist, <laughs> the only stupid question is the one that occurs to you that you don't ask. So when I saw the White House was honoring Scott Phillips, a civic hacker, self-described civic hacker, I said, yeah, I'm going to find out what that is. Mm -hmm. At the White House this past week, uh, there was a ceremony for Champions of Change. Uh, that the, where the president and the White House folks honored Scott Phillips. Now, Phillips is one of the originators of the term civic hacking, and it doesn't necessarily mean what you might think. He's part of a group called Code for Tulsa, which is a subset of Code for America. And I guess a, a thumb what, thumbnail way to summarize this is it's folks who get together, coders and web developers, you know, into the Internet stuff, they get together and build either a website or some other kind of web ability for a worthy cause in a great big hurry. So not the hacking that we think of that you see in, in negative tones right. with, with the media. At least that's the way he describes it, and I take it at face value. Now, what they, it, it evolved because June 1, when they had the National Day of Civic Hacking, came shortly after the terrible tornadoes here. So one of the things they did is they worked with both local agencies and eventually with FEMA in constructing maps showing the concentration and the areas that needed the most help. And I'm curious as to whether they've been doing that this week in the wake of the derecho in, uh, in uh, Tulsa, you yeah, know, the terrible was, straight line winds. The other night. So that's it in, in a hurry. Now, he evokes back to World War II era where... Uh, repair guys, and this sort of still goes on at Tinker, they would take beat up planes and disassemble seven or eight in order to have the parts to make one plane operational again. He alluded to that kind of a thing too, taking pieces of capabilities and helping a group that might not otherwise have online ability to develop it. Uh, so his uh, idea, when I talked to him, this was really humorous, he said, I had this vision of headlines in newspapers all over the country. Now this didn't happen, but it did with me. It's civic hackers invade White House. <laughs> so that was the headline I gave it. It's an intriguing thing, and I'm going to keep an eye on him and just, you know, stay in touch because but I think what they're doing is interesting. It got my attention. <laughs> hey, let's talk about the next thing that, that's on your list here. Um, talking about the economy here in Oklahoma, you always hear good, 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 but, but you've got uh, some, some other perspective of this. What? Well, there's, there, it's, it, I guess you could say that like beauty, economic vibrancy lies maybe in the eyes of the beholder. The Urban Institute and Brookings Institution did a state economic monitor that they're going to start doing every quarter. And they showed, among other things, that in Oklahoma over a 12-month period, May to May, 12 to 13, um, in one year that uh, weekly earnings were just slightly off, and by slightly I mean only slightly. However, that came in the wake of a year where Oklahoma led the country mm -hmm. in income growth uh, for uh, the, the year before that. They also found that public sector employment had uh, increased. And then there was other factors that looked more like the positive, you know, rosy picture we've been hearing. Well, uh, Preston Dorfengler, the finance secretary for the state, was much more upbeat, and he noted that the public sector, government sector increases in employment were at the local level in Oklahoma and not at the state level. So he's saying, you know, it's not, not the state government, uh, Governor Fallon at all, that have increased the numbers. Finally, a last quick thing, Meredith Whitney, uh, a writer, banking analyst who predicted the uh, housing crunch uh, of 2007, 2008, 2009. She says, different than, more optimistic than almost anybody, she says there's seven states that are almost guaranteed to have uh, real positive growth in the coming years, and Oklahoma's one of them. They're all in the central states, scattered around the central state area. Interesting. Hey, real quickly, because uh, you talked about this last week, the governor pursuing a special session. Any updates on that? Yeah, just this. The Democrats, uh, the leadership and the legislature are very negative about the idea, and if anything, kind of intensified their criticism this week, not wanting to spend the money. Uh, I will tell you that Mike Jackson and other Republican leaders in the House 
uh, have been active in recent days at the Capitol. Looks like they might be getting ready for something. That's really about all new to report. No fresh developments beyond that. Keep us posted. Nope, you've got it. Pat McGuigan, uh, if you want to read more of uh, Pat's stuff, CapitalBeatOK.com. We'll be back after this.